Hello everyone, I'm Ernie and I am so glad you're here with us today. Today we are back at the Stagecoach Mill and we are going to work on some material that was sent to us by Mark Orton all the way from Silver City, New Mexico. We're going to fire assay this material and we're going to see what it's all about and let's get to it. Okay, here are the two bags of material that we received from Mark from New Mexico. And in this bag here, we have some ore that has not been crushed up. Uh, what you can't see in this video is that there's a lot of pyrite inside the ore. And it's the same with this material here that has been crushed up. But what we're going to do, we're going to take this material we're going to take a half a pound of this crushed material and we are going to fire assay it and see what we get and i am kind of anticipating that we're going to get a prill of of pyrite that's in this ore but let's get to this project here we have our setup and what I'm going to do, I am going to take our material and I'm going to stir it around inside the plastic bag. So hopefully we will get an even mix of material. And what I am going to do, I am going to spoon out 227 grams of this material into our cup. So 227 grams basically makes a half a pound of material and this is what we're going to work with and let's get to our 227 grams. And there we have it. Okay, for this fire assay project, we're going to use 227 grams of anhydrous borax. And now we will use 45 grams of soda ash. And now we will add in 45 grams of silica sand. And now we're going to add in some potassium nitrate and I do want to make a mention if you're used to using Chapman's flux Chapman's flux uses manganese dioxide that's what gives Chapman's flux the black color and I like to use potassium nitrate instead of magnesium dioxide I don't really know what the um, 
the difference is, but I like potassium nitrate. But in this project, since I believe that there is a lot of pyrite in here, I am going to use a little more than 45 grams of potassium nitrate. And if you notice in the percentage of my mixture, I am basically making Chapman's Flux. Uh, the measurements are the same. If you were to take a uh, 100 grams of Chapman's Flux, you would use 40 grams of anhydrous borax and 20 grams of soda ash, 20 grams of silica sand, 20 grams of man magnesium dioxide or manganese dioxide, but I am using potassium nitrate instead of manganese dioxide and I'm going to use 55 grams of potassium nitrate in this project. And that's because of the high amount of pyrite that is in this material. And if you need me to give you a little more explanation of the flux that I'm using, go ahead and give me, write me a comment below and I will do my utmost best to get back to you in a timely manner, but I will answer your questions. Okay, and now, our last ingredient, I'm going to add in some high litharge with flour. High litharge is uh, lead-based and there's lead inside this high litharge. And what the lead does, it collects the, it collects the precious metals that's inside of the material. And the reason why I use high litharge with flour is because sometimes in a fire assay if you don't have enough gold or silver it's not going to collect but when you add in some high litharge with flour or actually just some high litharge or some lead uh, it will help collect the precious metal that's inside the ore but I have a really good friend local geologist and friend of mine Alex Dolbear, and when he, he gets so much gold in, in his ore that he doesn't have to put any type of metal collector in his, uh, in his fire assay, and that's because there's so much um, precious metals inside there, it just naturally collects. But a lot of the material that I use does not have that much gold or silver in it, so I do need to put a metal collector in it. And once again, this high litharge with flour is not added into Chapman's Flux. So if you're just using plain Chapman's Flux and you don't think, if you don't think that there's going to be a lot of material inside or a lot of precious metals inside the material, then you might want to add in some type of metal collector like litharge or bismuth or some lead. And, um, or if, you, or if you're going to have a lot of precious metal inside your material, um, then you don't have to put a lead collector, a metal collector inside your flux. Okay, here is our flux and our material. I am going to pour it into this container right here. It's got a snap on lid. And this is what I like to use when I have a lot of material just to mix it up. And so here is what our material looks like, and we're going to get it into the crucible. All right, here we have our material and our flux in this crucible that I purchased from Legends Mining Supply or lmine.com in Sparks, Nevada. And I did put a lead bar inside the crucible as a metal collector. We have our furnace and our crucible heating up. I don't think the camera is picking it up, but if you look very closely in the slag, you can see a bunch of little tiny bubbles because of the pyrite that is burning. Because of the cold temperature we are having today, I am heating up our cone mold so we will not get a thermal reaction. The temperature of our cone mold is 721 degrees.
If you notice this pour, you will see that the slag is very sloppy and thick, and that's because of all the pyrite that is in the slag. If you look closely, you will see all that pyrite that is stuck to the side of the crucible. All right. Before we get to our prill from our cone mold, I wanted to show you the material, which I believe is pyrite that came from the material that we got from Silver City. And you can see it all had gathered inside of the, of the crucible. And so it's going to be interesting to find out what we get in our uh, prill. And let's get to our prill. Okay, and here we go. Let's find out what we get. Okay, I'm pretty sure that our cone is stuck in the mold because of the pyrite. I've had that happen before. But this definitely is not coming out. It's slowly breaking up. Our slag is really clean. But you can see that the cone is stuck inside the cone mold. Right now, all I am able to do is to break up the slag that's inside our cone mold. I've never had a prill stuck in the cone mold like this before, so I am giving this futile attempt to heat up the cone mold and hopefully that the expansion will let loose of the prill. My attempt with my little propane torch did not end well, so now I have my cone mold back on top of my furnace because lead melts at 621 degrees and I am going to get this cone mold up to 1000 degrees so that it will melt the lead and hopefully I will be able to pour out or at least break out the lead prill with all that pyrite that is stuck inside the cone mold. And yes, the sun is starting to set here in Stagecoach, Nevada. Okay, we have a bit of success here. I did get the cone mold up to 1000 degrees and I was able to break the top layer of pyrite to get to the molten lead that was inside the cone mold. I was able to chip away some of the pyrite and the lead off the cone mold. And what I will do, I will just add in some clean flux and try to burn the rest of that material out. Well, this wraps up this episode using Mark's material from Silver City in New Mexico. And you can see that it did have a lot of pyrite in it. And to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure how to work with this material in a fire assay, but it's something I'm going to have to learn how to do. And next project with Mark's material, I am going to use some aqua regia, but I'm going to see if I can get the, the pyrite out of the material 
bowl and then we'll see how the aqua regia does to see if there's any gold inside this material and if you enjoyed this episode i encourage you to spank that like button and to share this on your channel so others can enjoy the process and if you haven't subscribed to our channel i would love to encourage you to subscribe and to become part of our au family we would love to have you in the family we would love to communicate with you we're so thankful that you're here we deeply appreciate your support and we will see you on the next one